What's going on guys? I'm out here at a new spot I've never been here to before. Uh, this is the Kansas River. Uh, I see it posted on Facebook all the time on the local Kansas City groups. People catch uh, big catfish down here all the time, all sorts of river fish. So we're going to give it a shot. I've never fished here before, never been down here, wasn't quite sure where to park, where to walk. Made it down here though and uh, it's looking pretty juicy so I don't know I'd like to get there's another guy fishing over there I want to stay out of his way I'd like to get down into this current it says don't go out there so I probably shouldn't go drop a bait straight off of there into the waterfall but I really want to kind of looks like the other side over there would be better and it looks like there's a little path and a road to get down there so i may have to look into that for future trips but uh for now i guess we're gonna try this little spot right in front of me here and go from there so i got two catfish rods with me i got yeah two catfish rod worms i got cut bait some cut shad i'm hoping to catch some fre something fresh i see something hit this hits hitting the surface out here i don't know what that is but Anyway, I'm gonna get down there and we'll get started. Little piece of cut shad on here. I'm gonna try to get it up against that wall. Yeah, that'll work. So we'll just let that hang out there. Find a good spot for this that's, that's probably as good a spot as any. All right, so we'll let that hang out. Now I am in Kansas and I got my Kansas license and the rule here is two rods but if you pay an extra six bucks you get uh, you get a third rod so I paid the extra six bucks so I'm gonna have two catfish poles sitting out and then uh, I'll be worms and lures on my lighter rods All right, so let's just see what happens. It's kind of the wrong time of day. I meant to get out and get fishing earlier, but it didn't happen, and that's okay. Oh, there's so many flies over here, it's ridiculous. All right, so we got our catfish rods out. All right, so this is my ultralight 10 footer. I just got a couple split shot, little circle hook on here. I think I'm just gonna let a worm float around with it, see what happens. Okay, all right guys, we're on our first fish. Oh, it ain't a fish. See if he'll come off on his own. What kind of turtle is this? Oh. Well, first catch of the day. Not what we were looking for. That's all that's over here, we'll change spots, but I gotta get my pliers out and get him off. All right, he got himself off, perfect. All right, well, there he goes. He'll run off at some point, I'm sure. I don't know what kind of turtle that is. It's kind of neat, though. There he goes. All right, guys, first fish of the day. You know, I think this is a baby flathead. I thought thought bullhead at first, but looking at it, just the shape of its head and everything, I think that's a little flathead. I'm gonna get him unhooked and get him back in the water, but. 
All right, well, there he goes. Hopefully we can get a, hopefully his big brother's living here. He's a bullhead, I was gonna use him as live bait, but I don't think he was, so. All right, guys, we're on our first good fish of the day. Well, this is the first one. That was my first time. Yeah. All right. Not bad. A little channel cat, if I can get him in. Not a bad one, five five pounds or so maybe. Got us. Yeah. Oh, just talking to that guy over there. He's filling me in. See how much this this guy weighs. How about? Four and a half, 4.8, not too bad. We might go ahead and string him up, make this into a catch and cook, but uh, I don't like to eat them if they get much bigger than that. Oh, yep, got something screwing with this one now. I did, I don't know if he's still there or not. Yeah, that's me. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll save it. What was your name again? Brian. Okay, okay. Got another one. He ain't that big, I don't think. He's getting a little angry up close to the shore. Oh, it's a gar, yep. Yeah, he come off. That's fine with me. Okay, so basically what I'm doing here is there's a little deep hole right here in front of me and just throwing some shad out there on the bottom, no big deal. So I'm gonna keep it going. Just talked to a guy who also fishes here. He said there were some, uh, some skipjacks swimming around and stuff, so or some gold eyes or something, so I may try to get a few of them for some fresher bait, but... Got a couple of fish on the cup bait. One eater size channel cat, one gar come off. No big deal. Gonna keep on going. I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate the snell knot again. It's extremely important on these circle hooks, so run your line through the hook, I should say. About like that much. And what I do, it should be like that. I'll pinch it off right here. Make a loop, so and then pinch that so it's like that. Wrap this loop six or seven times. And then fingers through, grab your tag end like so. Pull it through. Hold all your loops. Get it wet. Pull it tight. And that's your snell knot. Very important when using this circle hook. You can catch fish on circle hooks with a different knot, but they don't work as good. So there's that. And uh, the current's not real, real strong here. So all I'm doing 
I got one of these little weights with the rubber in them. I forgot what these are called. I haven't used one since I was a kid, but I acquired some recently, so. And just that, plus the hook, plus, plus our chunk of shad. Well, if you've already used a good amount, we're gonna have to probably get some fresh bait at some point, so. Once I get these catfish rods back out, I'm going to try to get some good fresh bait. Especially if there's skipjacks in here, that should be perfect. All right, and I like to go through twice. Make sure you got plenty of hook point exposure. Make sure there's no scales on it, and we're ready. Well. We ain't catching a ton of fish, but we have caught a couple halfway decent ones, and uh, man, it sure is a nice spot. I love fit trying out new fishing spots, so that's kind of another point of this channel, is just to force me to try new places, and man, I really like this spot. Definitely going to be back. All right, well, I got something big on my ultralight. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's pissed though and heavy was a snag at first. I can't even pick this joker up. Might be here a while. Oh, geez, what is this? Can't see nothing. The water's pretty murky. Oh my god. This is just nuts. I haven't even seen it yet. Every time he gets remotely close, he, uh, well, this is only four pound line too, so I don't want to, this is my bait pole. I'm trying to catch little sunfish or gold eyes or little bitty carps or whatever I can. I do have some, pro oh, it's another catfish, sick. This guy is white. Is that a blue? I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is a channel or a blue. Never caught a blue, so if it is, that's a new species for me. Nah, he's just another, uh, another channel, bud. Went for that night crawler. 
the red wiggler let's get a weight on this dude let's see if i can get him without him biting the sh biting the absolute sh out of me skin hooked but Another uh, decent sized channel cat, nothing huge, but uh, he might be a good eater. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and weigh him, see where we're at there. There we go. About. Oh, just under four pounds, another good eater size. So we're going to go ahead and get him strung up, keep on fishing. I guess we'll check our uh, cut bait while we're over here, but that little extreme spot, a little current spot down there keeps producing. We might move all our stuff down there. We'll have to see. Bait. Got the big old blob of worms. Going to hit this little little current spot again see what happens oh I've got another fish I thought it was a snag but it's moving now to gar Little short nosed guy. I don't really care if he comes off, but I want my hook back, so. Come on, buddy. He got my hook. Oh well. It'll be alright. Alright guys, we're back at the house. Uh, I had to kind of leave abruptly yesterday. Got, uh, did not bring enough water with me. Got a little bit, uh, a little overheated. Had to, had to get back to the car, get back home. It was alright. My bait was getting nasty. Bite was kind of slow in the first place anyway like I said I was out there at the wrong time of day I need to go back there you know in the evening or early morning and see what I can do but uh, anyway I'm going to uh, show you guys how to clean catfish I know three or four different ways to do it tons of ways to cook them um, this way that I'm going to show you today is going to get you the most meat off of them it's not necessarily the quickest easiest way to do it uh, i can show you the quick dirty way in another video in case you got a mess of them but i've only got two today so i'm doing the maximum meat method as i like to call it um i've already got one done off camera and the first step is going to be to gut them and get the head off of them which i'm also going to go ahead and do off camera but uh stick around stay tuned i'll show you what's next okay so at this point i've removed the head i've removed the guts and i've rinsed out the body cavity really well so if you feel here there's like a bony plate here and then you can feel all the ribs so what you got to do is helps if you have a paper towel you can get him like that all right that's what i was trying to do and you can hold them open like that and the paper towel just helps you grip it but uh, go right behind that bone there and just kind of hold your knife like this and what we're trying to do is just cut around all these ribs and you can feel them there is a little bit of meat on the bottom side of the ribs that you can remove later if you want to I usually don't because it's literally just like a, a bite, but work along the back of these ribs here. And this is a, a technique that I learned for trout, but I've kind of figured out it works good on pretty much 
any kind of fish, some better than others, like there's no reason to clean a crappie like this or a bluegill or whatever, but any kind of bigger, meatier fish, this seems to work pretty good on. And it looks like we missed a bunch of meat there, but if you flip it over, we didn't really. This is all on the inside of the ribs. Okay. So we'll keep following that all the way through. Like that. Then we'll get this side, same deal. So now that we're at this point, since this is a bigger fish, I'll go longer with the knife. Uh, if you, you know, don't have an extendable one, it's not a big deal. Just use what you got. And I'll just kind of keep it angled down. Make that cut through to about there. And just like just about anything else, get on the back side of the ribs. Go through like that. Keep your knife at an angle like that. And just... Like so. And go just. You got a bone right in here where that fin is. It can be kind of hard to get around sometimes. That's what I'm struggling with right here. All right, so there's our first fillet right there. Now this is, besides where this fin attaches, 100% boneless. They don't have pin bones. They got, they don't got nothing. And if you want to get this inside meat off, I've never really tried it, but I'm a, I'm a I think you could just, yeah, go like that. Work your way down it, the inside of these ribs here. And there's not a whole lot here either. It's just like a bite, but it's here if you want it. There, that's inside of the ribs. Like I said, just a bite, but you could bread and fry that if you were into it. So, same deal on the other side. This is all we're left with. All right, so the next step is skinning them. I know a lot of guys like to nail them to trees and yank the skin off with pliers and do all that, but really, the easiest way I've found to skin these things, man, is do it just like you would a crappie or a bluegill or anything else. Just get your spoon, go back here, and just work your knife along it like that. And these have these have the red meat on the on the back side like the sand bass do, so um, we'll address that here in a minute. So there's your skin. I admit I did leave a little meat on right there, but it's actually fine because it's pretty much all red meat that I left on, which I'll have to remove anyway. So really, if you can make that cut and not all the way down to the skin, that's for the better. Uh, I, I'll usually just take this fin, get rid of that, just cause it's, I mean, you can cook it if you want to, but it's all bone pretty much, only a little bite of meat. And then this right here is the belly meat. And if you buy catfish nuggets at the grocery store, this is what you're buying. You get the dead giveaway is it's got this like body cavity lining on there. Um, it's okay. It's not my favorite cut of the fish. I definitely prefer this part on the channel cats, but the flathead belly meat's really good. If I get a decent eater size three or four pound flathead, we'll do that on the channel too. But I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be eating no monsters, you know. So anyway. Uh, next step is to get all this red meat off of here. So what I'll do is I'll flip it over and right along this line here, I like to just, on a fillet this size, just cut it in half right there. Just like that. So then we're left with two lengthways cuts. And you can see, I'll set that aside for now, you can see right here that's where the majority of the red meat is. So what I'll do is I'll try to get my, my knife in there 
I'm angled about, I don't know, maybe 45 degrees. And I'll go just like that, right through it, and just work your way down, getting all that red meat off. Okay, come back to the front. All right, and then to get, if it doesn't all come off with your skin, to get this little bit off, what I'll do, whoops, to get this little bit off, what I'll do, kind of set it like, like that, and then we'll just real shallow, make a cut like that. And there you go. And that's ready to cook. Put it in our salt water. All right, so that's that filet knocked out. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and do this other one, and we'll see ya when we're ready to cook. Okay, so it's been about an hour or so since I got done cleaning them. I've had these soaking in salt water in the fridge, and I already dumped it once and refilled it. You see how it's kind of getting that color to it? A lot of that is like excess blood and shit leaking into the water so I like to let the catfish soak for a little while makes it taste a little bit better and I did bleed these out ahead of time which I haven't done in the past so I'm gonna see if that affects the flavor of them here uh, I think today I'm just gonna do a simple blackened catfish it's about the about the easiest way to cook them out there so start as always Pat your fish dry. So let's see, this piece, that piece looks pretty good. Really need to cut that in half. So that's a good looking piece. Go like that. We'll let the rest of them soak for a little while longer and then uh, probably end up freezing them for another day. All right, so as always, pat dry. That's pretty much standard operating procedure on this channel when we're cooking fish. And you know, don't have to be perfect. That's good enough. So yeah, get them on your plate. Off the towel, that's didn't go as I had envisioned in my head here. All right, cool, so let's uh, get these kind of laid out like so and today it's just going to be some of this this is Cajun seasoning from the Spice House in Chicago uh, they have a lot of good stuff check them out online whatever I'm not sponsored or anything obviously but uh, just what I happen to have so anyway Give them a nice good coating, get the other side, flip them over. Yeah, it's kind of heavy, but it'll be all right. All right, so do that. And uh, I'm gonna let those sit for a few minutes and wipe up the counter before the wife sees it. So, yeah. So this is a something I just picked up at a garage sale. Thanks, Aaron. This probably would have taken 10, 15 minutes to properly heat up inside. And out here, it got this thing got it going quick. I just think propane's better or gas is better. So anyway, we got our pan hot. We're gonna go ahead and do the fish drop.
and we'll let that go for a minute or two we want to get that other side nice a good nice char on it uh, we don't want to burn it but we want that want it to be nice and brown on each side so we'll let that sit for a minute then we'll come back out give them a flip all right they're cooking fast on here oh man that's exactly what you want just like that All right, guys, we are ready to eat. We got our uh, blackened catfish over some rice and uh, we're gonna try it out, see how it is. All right, guys, let's give it a shot. Mmm. This method of cooking catfish is so good, it's so easy. You just get a skillet hot, dump some Cajun seasoning on your fish, butter up that skillet, throw the fish in. About as simple as it gets. And man, it just comes out so good. And the nice thing about catfish is, you know, the catfish meat is, is a lot firmer than say a, a crappie or a, or a sunfish or whatever. So it stays together in a skillet. If you were gonna try to do that with a crappie, yeah, you'd have something edible at the end, but it'd be like a, you know, just a little pile of fish mush, you know. It doesn't uh, doesn't hold together in the skillet very well where the catfish does, so. I honestly like cooking catfish in the skillet more than frying them, so, you know. To each their own, this is my preferred way to do it. Uh, maybe in the future we are going to get that thing up and frying and there's probably going to be some catfish going in it. I still like it fried, just like this a little bit more. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please, please, please like and especially hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Really helps the channel a lot, so like I said, stick around for more. Um, don't know where my next fishing trip's going to be or what we're going to be doing, but gonna be fun either way so uh, until next time see ya